Most people recognize Michael Burry as an important character in the film The Big Short, which tells how Burry predicted the global financial crisis. Burry is essentially the economic equivalent of Batman. Anyway, no one knows what he looks like. And now then, he appears with a tweet to save us all before deleting them and vanishes into the night. That is what we'll be talking about in this video. Please click the like and subscribe buttons so we can continue to bring you videos about what's happening in the stock world. Done? Alright, let's get started. As I previously stated, Barry gives us hints about the financial world, which he did just a few days ago, posting a new series of tweets in the current state of the economy. I'd like to start this video with discussing some of his tweets from last year. One of his first vital tweets stated, People always ask me, what is going on in markets? He then stated, It's easy. The greatest speculative bubble in history by two orders of magnitude in everything. And essentially, he was alluding to here and there was much more rampant speculation in all aspects of financial markets than we've seen in a long time. What he's referring to is speculation, not just in cryptocurrency or other fringe areas of the financial markets like scam coins and old coins, but more broadly in cryptocurrency. And then not only in shady speculative stocks, but also in stocks in general. Many businesses are fantastic companies, fantastic businesses that make money. But even those stock prices, even those businesses had exorbitantly high stock prices based on speculation. Even last year, it was concluded that the stock market is possible amidst a bubble was relatively simple. Schiller PE would be the most obvious place to look for this evidence. The Schiller PE is now a relationship between the average earnings of the S&P 500 companies over the previous years divided by the price of those companies. So essentially, it tells us how expensive our stocks are about the earnings they've produced on average over the last decade. And you can see that the Schiller PA was the second highest last year. Even today, after the US market has dropped dramatically in recent months, the Schiller PE is still at the same level as the Roaring Twenties, just before the Great Depression. We could also consider the standard S&P 500 PE ratio, which does not compare average earnings over the last decade to price. However, earnings for the previous months are compared to price, and while the S&P 500 PE ratio is better, it is still relatively poor. As with most things, leverage is problem with crypto. If you don't know about crypto leverage, you know nothing, regardless of what else you know. Michael nailed crypto. He was right about cryptocurrency and speculation in general. Many altcoins and scam coins promoted by celebrities and others on social media were wiped out. Cryptocurrencies like Lunaterra went to zero. Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency star, is down 70%. Last year, Michael's macro predictions were accurate. He continues to comment on the US and global economies. He's talked extensively about inflation's effects, how he expects the market to perform, and how he views cryptocurrency. On June 13, Burry said the theater took a decade to go over stuff. Not everyone leaves in a year. Burry is using the stock market crash analogy. Everyone leaves a burning theater or cinema. Everyone's crowding the door, but there's only one. There's a bottleneck of cinema goers trying to leave. The stock market isn't just about leaving through a small door. It would help if you also fill your seat, sell your shares. It would help if you had someone crazy enough to run into a burning theater and sit down as everyone leaves. This is devastating. We saw how quickly this happened in 2020 when markets dropped 30% in two weeks. Nobody wanted to hold stocks as everyone tried to get out. Burr retweets that it will take a long time to unwind because the theater was packed for over a decade. He thinks this will take more than a year, unlike 2020's crash. It was a two-week flash crash. 
On June 13, he said 1999 tech bubble, 2001 to 2005 value revival, 2005 housing bubble, 2009 almond farms, 2020 covert bottom, 2020 lockdown horrors, 2021 meme stocks, 2021 crypto leverage, 2021 inflation, and 2022 were not done yet. Late question mark. Barry congratulates himself for being right about several things. He's good at spotting macroeconomic patterns and upcoming events. He's often off time. Then there was this tweet from a few days earlier, on June 11th, the day inflation figures were released, and it was yet another record in the United States inflation rate. Burry aims the Federal Reserve, which has been consistently wrong for a long time. And I believe this is a well-deserved jab on the Federal Reserve. To get this level of inflation under control, the highest we've seen in years, as I've mentioned, if you measure inflation the same way we did during the previous inflation crisis in the 1970s, we're already above that. And they had to raise interest rates to 20 or 19% back then. As a result, interest rates are currently at 1.5%. I don't think that will suffice. Then, as previously stated, Michael posted several tweets while I was planning this video just a few hours ago. So I'd like to go over these as well. He has tweeted extensively not only about the economy, but also about politics. And just a few hours ago, he tweeted about the ongoing Supreme Court decision in the United States. It falls into contentious issues that I probably shouldn't discuss. So we'll just put that one aside. Back to the finance tweets. He asked, are we certain Bitcoin isn't just another risk asset on the Nasdaq? While displaying a graph of Bitcoin's collapse and how it is nearly identical to the Nasdaq, which of course is a component of US technology stocks. And of course, this tweet is a direct shot at all of the crypto experts who seem to suggest up until the beginning of this year that Bitcoin could act as a haven against inflation. Similarly, when there is inflation, people rush to gold. Even when the stock market crashes, gold typically performs well. People predicted Bitcoin would do the same, but as we've seen, Bitcoin has behaved like any other risky asset, collapsing like the stock market, and it is running concurrently with the part. The Nasdaq index is at least partially speculative. And there you have it, Barry's progressive thoughts on the current situation. Do you agree with these points of view? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Again, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. It's free. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.